So we have very little time. We got so much to get into uh, into here in the span of only a couple of months. I just want to talk about what's happened. Gore Downey uses his final show with the tragically hip to make a public plea to the prime minister who's in front of him at the moment, Justin Trudeau, to help indigenous communities, especially in the north, saying that something needs to be done and, and maybe this is the guy who can do it. He released a new record. We are the hallucination, bringing together indigenous voices, uh, not just from Canada, all around the world. Tanya Tagak drops her new album, Retribution, um, about... She describes the, the rape of indigenous culture, people, and land. And then Gore Downey again releases Secret Path, telling the story of Cheney Wenjack through film and song, not to mention Joseph Boyden's novella on the same subject. And this doesn't seem like a coincidence. No, it no. wasn't. It was um, with us, it was it was Joseph that actually kind of put this together um, as as a whole sort of project where he he approached that we want we knew we wanted him involved and we knew that we wanted uh, indigenous artists and like yeah involved with this and this was this came from like uh, uh, this idea has been around for a long time of having Joseph like write something between our songs yeah and um, he approached us and he was like w- we bounced a lot of ideas around of, of what we had for for the for the album and uh, it went through a bunch of transitions of like where it was going and at the end it came out that we wanted to make like a nation and it was like this huge broad picture and Joseph brought up that like hey like do you mind I'm, I'm writing this novella and it's kind of tied in with um, with w- something that Gord's working on also like is this something it's about Chani Wenjack like yeah. would you guys be interested and it was like absolutely mm-hmm. so like it, yeah it's, they're all loosely connected but they're definitely on purpose and, and does this feel like a real watershed moment in, in indigenous pop culture I think so yeah like uh, it's, this has never happened before yeah you know what do you, what do you, what do you think sparking it the conversation and like the 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 with idol no more it seemed like a a, a big uh, um, reawakening or, or reaffirming that indigenous people are here like w- when they did that when they when they put together the the round dances during you know the busiest consumer time of the year at Christmas and took up these consumer spaces yeah. and just saying and just to say like we're still here you need to remember that like we're still around and I think. That was a big move. Go ahead. I feel like the big difference is the willingness of people to listen outside of the indigenous community. We've had these talented artists for decades. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We've had these people trying to work for change for decades, but right. we've been yeah. largely talking within our own community, within people who were already sympathetic or on the same side. Well, what sparked that change? You think that I really, I really don't know. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, it's it's something that's amazing me every day right now. You know, and I, I mean, you're seeing it. In arts, I think first, you know, you kind of look at arts for for a barometer in that sort of department. And 20 years ago, people outside the indigenous community weren't paying attention to indigenous art. And something's happened. I mean, you were seeing it with like Tanya and and uh, Buffy winning Polaris prizes. You're seeing it in people being interested in a group like us that are remixing powwow music. Like when we started, we asked people, you know, have you heard powwow music? And most people, non-indigenous people said no. Hmm. You know, so we're bringing this whole other thing that people weren't exposed to at all that you would think that they would be, <laughs> being that they're in, that that's the music of this land. <laughs> you, 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 you mean you 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 sound like um, like you said you don't you're not entirely sure why that's happening, but you you seem pleased that it is. Like mm. we can talk about the the cultural impact of this moment, but I'm I'm wondering, Bear, like what what does this mean to you personally? Personally, it's hope. It's a huge amount of hope. Uh, you know, I was really raised with the idea that things were going to get a lot worse before they got better. You know, and that, that idea has been with me so, since I was a little kid. So I've always been waiting for how bad is it going to get before it gets better. And, you know, they, I think part of what's happening is this whole uh, tipping point that we're on right now. And, and that's, a, that's a scary thing. You know, right away you think about a tipping point being a really scary thing. But a tipping point means that there's a lot weighted on both sides. So I think that it's people... People just, you know, turning on their own brains, wanting to, wanting to learn more, wanting to listen, being open to, to learning new ideas, and you know, in a way that, that I don't think was present before. Yeah, I think that has to do with like social media specifically and being able to tell our own <coughs> stories that way. Like uh, it, was, it was Will Smith, I think, that said like, "Yo, the violence isn't new. The violence has always been here. The cameras are new. Mm-hmm. So now it's making people that like, you know, there's neighborhoods where police." help the community and there's neighborhoods where police don't help the community so these like the people that 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 are saying like yo the police are hurting us the people that are living here are saying no they help me all the time right so now they're filming it and saying like no they're hurting us and now they're like oh i don't know and it keeps coming up and they can't deny it anymore well i feel like it's deeper than that 
because we've been telling these stories for exactly, years. Exactly, but now there's but proof. We've been we've been out there telling them to to the public. Telling but them people, is different people, than people like are actually it. willing to listen. Well, exactly. telling it is showing it. It's just like there's there's a willingness to listen that started. But like there's like this... you can talk as much as you want, but until people from outside are well, willing okay, to listen here, to what's going on, and that that's I think the, where the real change. I agree one hundred percent. But like because of 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 social media, like there was one situation on CNN when um, Geraldo was was describing the specific situation in the violent situation where this guy was getting arrested for throwing bottles and all this stuff happened. Right. But then there was a dude that was standing there who filmed it. And he got what actually happened, which wasn't what Geraldo was, was saying was happening. So now that that got tweeted out and got a million retweets, people are getting the other side and not just from Fox and CNN. So we're actually getting able to tell like what actually happened in these situations. And where, where were you hearing voices before? You were hearing voices in traditional media, which was where you would hear from select people who people select. And with social media, you were, you were able to hear anyone's able to get their voices out mm. and anyone's able to be heard to speak to both of your points. Mm. Tim, Tim, do you prefer I call you Tim or Toolman? It's whatever. <laughs> is there, do you have any, any preference at all? Yeah, it's Toolman's cool. Toolman, um, this is your first full record. Yeah. This is this is you're new to a tribe called Red. Mm-hmm. Um, as Bear mentioned, th- this is not your first time. You've been you've been telling these stories for a very very long time. I'm wondering, stepping into this band, what what emotions are you feeling right now? Uh, it, it was it was um, it came from a really good place when when I joined the band. It was um, I've been friends with these guys for a long time. Um, we've collaborated before, and um, I would be at South by Southwest when they were at South by Southwest. You know, like so, like it, we we were we were connected very lot. So I was really down with what everything that they were doing, and um, when we collaborated, it was like I was it was awesome. Like yeah, we should work with each other. Okay, yeah. we should work. So when it came time to join the group, um, I initially kind of said no. Yeah, because I had like. Um, things going on in my life like uh my, my production stuff was was kind of at a nice spot that i would i liked it at but i kind of brought it back to like um me seeing tribe for the first time and or even the last time i saw them perform and then it was just um it was an amazing feeling as, as an indigenous man watching everyone else enjoy themselves and um um it, it put something though you could tell there was something special going on and uh, it, it, I, I just, it, and it was the whole message behind it. And I was like, yeah, okay, let's do this. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm down for it. And then the whole process of learning this, um, this whole new thing right now is, I, I guess, a whole new genre for me because I used to do just hip hop and R and B. Um, learning from these guys has been amazing. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're they're like huge encyclopedias of, uh, encyclopedias of, of of every kind of genre of music. Yeah, and they're DJs, so it's like it's it's just. It's it's been an awesome learning experience, and I've um I've grown like so much being in being in the group. Um, it's awesome being able to represent myself as 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 an indigenous man from Six Nations, Mohawk man, you know, and um, represent my family and like just 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 be out there and it's 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 awesome. It's a great thing. It's like it's just the first time in my life actually where I've 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 done something like uh performing and making music on a positive level. I used to work with rappers and like um singers and they wouldn't talk about like the most positive content usually. But like but like most times but this is the first time that I, I, I get on stage. It's a positive thing. It's, you know, we wake up and we do interviews. It's a positive thing. Like when I make music now, it's a positive thing. And it changed the way that I make music, period, now. So um, it's, it's, it's been an amazing experience for myself. But, there was, but um, it's, 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 a, it's great. It's great. I, 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 can't, I can't say <laughs> it's, it's, it's awesome. Let's, let's hear some music. This is, um, let's take a listen to a little bit of the record. This is how the album opens. We are the tribe that they cannot see. We live on an industrial reservation. We are the Halusa Nation. We have been called the Indians. We have been called Native Americans. We have been called hostile. We have been called pagan. We have been called militant. We have been called many names. We are the Halusa Nation. We are the human beings. The callers of names cannot see us, but we can see them. While the song was playing, there's a conversation happening about the, the, the role in social media in in the change that you've seen uh, happen over the years. Mm. Do, 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 do you want to continue that conversation? 
Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. absolutely. I'd love to. Yeah, well, we can just touch on what we're we're. Yeah, please, please do. Yeah. Um, um, I'm saying that social. It's a little bit closer to the mic, if you don't mind. Thank you so much. When Bear was mentioning not knowing what the problem was, I think it's social media. Well, no, I don't know 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 what the difference is in people's thinking. There's a difference in people's thinking that's changed. Right, and I'm saying that that spark and that change in people's thinking came from social media. Yo, my change in 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 thinking came from social media. That's that's your that's your that's your experience. I don't think that's everybody's experience. Right, and like people and, and again, you're 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 an indigenous person. We're talking about listening to indigenous, non-indigenous issues. People. People. Yeah, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So absolutely, so there's a difference in the way that people are willing to take in, listen to, and be uh, interact with indigenous culture that wasn't there. Whether or not we had social media, isn't going to change whether or not people are willing to interact. Yes, it does. I think it does because the exposure is out there more. Like we're out there. We we don't need a label anymore to push our ideas. We don't need um, media to push our ideas anymore. We can have these conversations and interact. But those but those things were being talked about and portrayed within media twenty years ago. But people weren't as interested in so, in interacting with those issues. At Awapiskat, um, that kind of blew up when, like, I remember first hearing about what was going on there because of a small article written by the small town there. Like, it wasn't CBC, it wasn't National, until it got started, that little article got shared on Facebook. And then other, like, bigger news conglomerates started seeing that and then started, like, reporting on it. So it came from this, like, people, yeah, people were talking about it, the struggles going on, but it wasn't until people started sharing it and it got... Um, trending did it did that change start to happen in but people's but that, that no that change in people's mind had to happen for that to start trending yeah I, I, yeah and I honestly think I uh, that uh, but if people don't know about it they can't change they, true. they wouldn't they wouldn't know but, about but it but all you have to do but, is look to know about it and people it, weren't willing to look people but, it, but, weren't, but, but people it, weren't showing it but is it this an is an why, like society totally were but society it. wasn't backing it up but like it, native issues weren't getting the press weren't getting the they the, were getting press though you, you, like, uh, the, the <laughs> Whether it was negative press or just press in yeah. general, they like people they, they were in talking Oka didn't about get it. Press, it was all over the press, right? But it was whose press? Who? What side of the story was told? Well, if social media was set up and had like live things going on of what was happening behind the, the there were live, there were live more, things coming out of what was happening. Not to the same extent that was coming out here. Well, like, what I'm saying is that the, the difference is the extent comes from people's interest outside of the community. And I'm saying that that interest is peaked because it's being put on the forefront because of social media. Mm. Well, no, okay, I see what you're saying, but what I'm saying is that that, that change, that change in people's thought sure, isn't yeah. coming because of the social media. The social media is helping amplify that, but there's a change in people's thinking that's going on. It's not being created by social media. Social media is a tool that's well, being of, used of, of that's being used to help it. Yeah, it's but definitely. It's not that's not the change. It's spreading the, the change, consciousness. The change that you're is coming from, about. From, some, from someplace else. I'm not exactly sure. I'm not willing to say I know where that change is coming from. That's mm. yeah. my question. I'm but, a, this is what I'm observing, and I'm seeing right. like and the I'm, big and I'm change. Saying, I'm, I'm listening to what you're observing, and I'm saying I don't agree that that's where the change is coming from. Yeah, and then like it's same same thing with me. Like I th- I think it's I think it's a general consensus of like it's it like the social media is a tool. You know what I'm saying? Like like definitely. like like social media is a tool. So social media is definitely helping in that, but. Um, we don't know whether if it's we we don't know why um uh, we don't understand why. And I think this is why this conversation is happening because we're we're so baffled about. I, I think we're, I, we're, yeah. we're we're baffled about you know like us getting asked questions on the media that like like these really awesome questions. Mm-hmm. We we've been we've been asked the same exact questions for a long time, and then now like we're we're getting a little bit more deeper into um our our, our issues or or just like everyone being open minded and so like um willing to listen to yeah. everything. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's 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 baffling to us because we yeah. we've never experienced this and I just know if, as long as I've been alive, um I've never experienced this personally that um the media, the 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 people in general are just so um they're ready. They're ready to just take it all in and to even hear both sides of everything. And um, we're like, we're we're talking to somebody just yesterday. It was like, listen, I never heard of residential schools until like a month ago. Mm-hmm. And then um, it, it it was like it was in what was Gord was doing. So it, it was in the arts. Yeah, it was in it was in a bunch of places. Right. But like, let's talk. Let's talk about like social media and just the idea of hashtags as a movement. But I, 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 I want to talk about what the movement's leading towards. Like, I I, I I'm 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 so. I think it's it's so awesome to, to hear that, that this conversation is happening within the band. Like, oh yeah, that, that, oh yeah. That, no. that we discuss ideas that, like this. That, all the time. That, that, that it's that that there's you, know, you guys are also trying to figure out how and and why this is happening. And I think mm-hmm. and I think that we yeah. don't know. 
And yeah. that's the thing. And, that's, that, and it's cool. Thing, and it's cool. Exactly. And it's cool to not know. It's it's cool not to know. But, but we like, can but we can understand and we can come up with different ways. I, I think that like um, not one person's right. And, you know, there's not one right way to do everything. And there's not one right way of like what it is. Yeah. And but there's definitely wins. There's definitely wins. Like social media is definitely a win. It's definitely a win. But like but like is is it the reason why? I don't. We don't know. We, we could. We have a. We have. We have an educated guess. Let's look at these focus sure. points. Like, like no, the, I understand. The, the major. The major revolutions that have been going on. They're all hashtags. Black True. Lives Matter. I don't know more. Arab Spring. Like they're hashtags. You can't sure. tell me that social media isn't helping this consciousness. Oh no 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 no. I'm not saying, saying, that, I'm not saying, saying it's not helping. Not where the change? So that, okay, they're saying that that's not the where the change is happening. Yeah. Saying it's a tool of change, but that's not where the change in people's thinking has happened. So, it's definitely helped. It's definitely helped. But I want to talk about the goal that it leads towards, and I want to talk about the, the record before you guys have to go. I want to talk about the hallucination. <laughs> no, man, don't, don't be – this is this – is, I, I had no intention of ever stopping that. It's such a – it's right. a beautiful conversation to see that not only are things happening, but we're, we're also struggling with the idea of why things are happening along with the gratitude that, that it is. And I, of course. And I can say that, sure, you know, I've, I, I've read social media and I've, I've found out about things. I'm from Newfoundland, you know, yeah, yeah. and the social media coverage of what's happening in Muskrat Falls has – has provoked my interest in Muskrat Falls. But bear to your point, I, I'll, I'll say that also, like, I don't remember thinking about Labrador in the same way mm-hmm. when I was six or seven mm-hmm. that I do right now. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think there's, I, I think there's, there's, there's a mixture of, of both your points happening, but I want to lead that towards the hallucination, mm. which is, which is kind of the thesis statement, which is kind of the, the modus operandi of the record. And I'm hoping you can tell me what the hallucination is. Wow. <laughs> um, I think the hallucination is just a, a group of like-minded people, you know, like that, that, that all want change and all want... Uh, so it's kind of what we're talking about. Yeah. It's, in, it's, in a way, it's, it's like... It's and the you result know, of what we're talking about. Yes, exactly. I mean, like um, um, people becoming like more uh, awake to the things that matter, you know, like the earth and, 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 and the way that we treat the planet, the way we treat people and mm. hum, as human beings, you know, taking a break right back to that concept. Basically, um, J- John spoke like these words in the, in the intro of our album and they resonated like very, very well. Let, let's go back a little bit. We Just before we, we had that conversation, we listened to the, the track. From, yeah. If you're listening to this and you don't know who John is, who's John? <laughs> uh, John Trudell was uh, an indigenous activist in the U.S. who uh, took a stand in the late 60s when he, he occupied um, Alcatraz. And uh, in that, um, again, bringing indigenous issues f- to the forefront, like for the first time because of the, the media coverage that they were getting there and what was going on in the statement and what he was doing. And, uh, and, and all he was doing was claiming his rights. Like there was rights saying that if uh, there was federal land that wasn't being used, indigenous people were allowed to occupy that land. So that's what he was doing. And um, yeah, traveling after that, traveling um, to Australia and traveling like all over the U.S. and Canada, you find out how how much that man has touched other people and other movements and other communities. And yeah, it was like, like back home, like he, he was a superhero back mm-hmm. home. He was a man that, you know, that really, that, that, that we, could, we could look up to. You know, a kind-hearted, you know, like very, very good intentions man, and like, uh, and and the things that he stood for were the things that we needed people to st- to stand for at the time. And, and Bear, you 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 spoke to him, and you have that recording. I mean, just just weeks before his death, is that right? Um, well, no, actually, we did the recording was uh, months, months, months before, before, but it wasn't yeah. long before. I Not, say. It wasn't. It no. wasn't very long. What, no. what, what does what does that mean to have that there? Uh, it, I mean, the whole the whole meeting with him and 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 collaborating and stuff was all just a really uh, special experience. You know, it was something that uh, was dreamt about for a long time, was talked about for a long time, and wished for, and and came close to a few times, um, and just was never kind of the right moment. Uh, and about a year before we did the recording, we uh, we met him in uh, in New Mexico. And, you know, before we even got a chance to say, like, let's collaborate, he was offering up writing that he wanted, to, wanted us to work with. You know, hey, do you think you can do something with this? Um, so he, 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 he loved you guys. He, he knew you then. Yeah. Well, I mean, first we heard that he had just heard of us. Uh, and then when we were playing in New Mexico, we heard he wanted to introduce us that night. Uh, that must have, been, that must have been amazing. It was incredible. It's like a highlight <laughs> of the career for sure. When I first met him, uh, you know, he walked up to me. He already knew my name. And, you know, I got tried, you know, you're meeting a hero and, and you're trying to get out, you know, what he means to you, what, you know, what it means to meet him. Like, you're trying to get all these things out, and, you know, without being starstruck. And before I could say much, he was 
telling me how much he our music meant to him. You know, and that he had that it took him it took him you know a, a portion of his life you know being uh, 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 an activist and involved with with the movement and stuff to figure out that where he could make the most impact was as a musician was as a writer and and, and using his words in that way and that we had naturally found that place. I got to speak on Monday with Tracy Deer um, and Brittany Laborn from APTN's show uh, Mohawk Girls, and, and we we had a conversation about the TV shows that that they they watched growing up. And uh, Tracy said she watched Three's Company and she watched Road to Avonlea. And, and Brittany said, you know, she watched Home Improvement. And, and we talked about how when <laughs> – so this is just another Toolman tool reference. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like I look like Al, so that's yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, you totally do. Yeah, I know, you I gotta, totally do, I gotta, I gotta, I'm not going to lie. I got, a real, I got a real Al thing going on. I know. No, no. Believe me. No, I, no. I'm aware. <laughs> I got it. got to throw the flannel on and yeah. you're, you're straight. So you're right. I, was, I mean, when I get home, I look even more like Al. Halloween, bro. <laughs> Think about it. I should. Y'all get a little – Okay, yeah, tape get, measure. Exactly. Um, and I said, I said, Brittany, did you, did you see anything on television that that you f- did you ever see yourself on television back then? And she said, no, absolutely not. And Tracy got emotional. Mm-hmm. Tracy said, like it was such a gift to her to hear and to see in front of her that she now is able to have people represented on television that mm-hmm. were never represented before. Ian, like, do you see parallels to that story to what you've been able to do with with indigenous youth in this country? Absolutely, one hundred percent. Like, uh, um, knowing where I am and the responsibility I have, like where I am in my career, um, I'm trying to to be that reference in in pop culture that like we didn't really have growing up, um, in in the way I carry myself, in the way I interact with people, in the way I, I present the music, in the way I create music and stuff like that. So. Yeah, definitely. I totally understand where where she's coming from, and like not just that. Like you see it with like um, Wob Rice in Ottawa. Like it, it's so important right now, and Joseph Boyd and Tanya Tagak. You know, there, it's not just within like music, and and we're kind of um, indigenous people are being represented in all over pop culture, and um, I'm able to show my kids this. I'm able to show you know Wob Rice. Um, an Anishinaabe man and Connie Walker in the morning, I'm able to like show my kids this, that, that I wasn't able to be shown. Like we all have the story of like, you know, seeing, seeing uh, uh, Buffy St. Marie on Sesame Street and like how, yo, it had impact on an entire generation. And I can only imagine like what it means seeing like other media people like that on a daily basis for indigenous youth, you know? Yeah, yeah, even like seeing like uh, hearing Booyah Tribe for the first time. Mm-hmm. You know, like, or, or seeing Graham Greene in like uh, Die Hard yeah. with a Vengeance. You know, like those were very like they were like, like non non traditional role. He was just a yeah. native dude. Like he was just a dude. He was just a cop. Like he wasn't like a native cop. Yeah, yeah it, right, was, right, it was right. no, but even like even just having him, like a guy came from my res was very important and me knowing that uh that I was represented. But that, that was a big deal to me. I know that other people wouldn't wouldn't get that, but that's okay. That I felt like that was mine. Like I was mm. like, This is this is for me right now. Mm. And that's that's that was very important. So what's what we spent a lot of time today talking about, and I, I know you guys have to go, but um, we spent a lot of time talking about kind of the why of things that are happening, a little bit about what's happening. But I think I want to close off by talking about the, the kind of what's next of, of what's happening. Mm. This is, as we mentioned, a, a watershed for not just in indigenous art and culture in this country, but as you, as you mentioned, there, there seems to be an awakening in, in Canadians to, in, in non-indigenous Canadians, and, and they're asking questions that perhaps they weren't asking before. And why, we're, we're, we're discussing why. But I wanna know where do we go from here? Bear, well, what are the next steps you'd like to see from your audience and, and, and from Canadians? Um, well, one thing I realized, you know, more recently than anything, was part of what we've created in in, in you know our remixing of powwow music and it gaining popularity outside of the indigenous community. And now we can look at our shows, and our shows are very diverse in the audience. And you know, we have Canadians of every different background out there. And what's so surprising to us is watching everybody re- respond to it in the same way. It seems like these powwow remixes hit people in the heart, hit people in the guts. It's not cerebral. Yeah, people yeah. feel it. Now, in Canada, the hardest thing to have between indigenous people and settler people is a conversation on equal ground without anger and malice. That's, we, it's just trying to find the space to have that is almost impossible. You know, as soon as you start talking about indigenous issues, it attacks the base of what is the myth of Canada. 
mm-hmm. you know, and you're attacking that indoctrination that everybody's gone through. So the, that those animosities, those angers on both sides pop up really quickly. Um, what, what I've seen with people coming to our shows and non-Indigenous people experiencing our music in, in the same or similar way than we're watching our Indigenous crowd experience it, that's a common experience. Now, Indigenous people and Canadians from all different backgrounds are having a common experience. They're feeling something together. Now, that's a step towards finding a place to have this conversation. It's a step, it's a step towards being able to put the old animosities, the old angers behind us, break through the indoctrination and have this very, very important conversation between the nations that are originally from this land and the people who came after. And that the, 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 the answers that we're, we're looking for that are going to help fix where we, where we find ourselves right now, I believe is going to come from the indigenous people of the Americas being able to come together and have that conversation with the people who came after. You saw Gordani. I, um, I, I was fortunate enough to see the concert on Friday night in mm-hmm. Toronto. Mm-hmm. Um, and at one point in the show, he says maybe, he said, let's not celebrate the last 150 years. Let's celebrate the next 150 years. And that line struck a lot of people, but it also got this this rapturous applause from everybody in the room. Mm. Mm. It was, you know, you you, uh, you so you say like, I'm, I'm interested in the in the myth of Canada, which well, I think which which I think is a, which is I think this is a generation that's exploring that for the first time. Mm. Right. Yeah. I there's, just, yeah. There's a lot of there's a there's a lot of ugly um, there's a lot of there's there's, a, there's an ugly past for sure, um, but what's happening right now. Is um f- for once like you know like I'm I'm seeing I'm seeing kids who are um watching like heritage moments with like with the actual like you know the Charlie uh, the the Cheney the Cheney uh, uh, start Winjack story yeah like I'm seeing that like as as being a part of Canada now and Canada's kind of stepping up to to doing that and I don't know if it's the Canada the people but I think it, it's 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 the people it's the people in the media it's the people who um like gourd it's just there's people that are coming up and just are are willing to explore this um or not even explore but just just tell the real story i guess of what what's going on but um but by telling that though they're they're i don't know it's 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 just everybody's just kind of like uh willing to just listen and that's that's or 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 at least or at least uh are willing to change, ha- have a change of heart or, or, or a change of mind or even just open up their mind or, and that's, that's a very hard thing to do with anybody, especially if a stu- if people are stubborn, you know, like it's really hard to change someone's mind, if anything, if they get their mind to it. But that doesn't seem to be the case here right now. We seem to be having a conversation between two people and there's no, there's no anger. There's no nothing. It's just like, you're right. And, or I'm wrong. And it's okay to be those things like that. And then I think people are are learning how to have a, a, that kind of conversation right with with uh, with each other right now. You know, I'll leave the last word. Yeah, to you. just on that idea of myth of Canada. Um, I found out recently there was an archaeologist on my res. I was hanging out, and he had this this timeline and showed me how long I'm from Nipissing, like Nipissing, how long the the Nipissing Ojibwe people have been living on this lake, and it's thirteen thousand years. We've been living like my mom still lives on that lake for thirteen thousand years. Now, what do you think about that hundred and fifty year idea of Canada. Okay, so as we were following the, the, the receding ice caps, like there was, there was trees that had to come, and those trees eventually came after we were there because it was under like ice for thousands of years, right? So we, we were living on that lake before maple trees showed up. So, you know, so let's, let's so, talk so about what's, this what's mythic, a, what's 150 years? Let's talk about this myth of Canada. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, let's talk about, and, and if you're going to learn this history of, of this country, and, you're, and your, your stories only go back 150 years, like, we need to talk about that. This has been so great, guys. Thank you so much for coming in and having this conversation. This has been, this has been wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thanks yeah, for having thanks, us. Thanks, man. Thanks to all three of you for being here. I've been speaking with uh, Ian Campo, Bear Witness, and Tim Toolman Hill. I'm Al. This is A Tribe Called Red. Their new record, We Are the Hallucination, is out everywhere now. <laughs>